And in 1970 was the year that my father started a aluminum and steel fabrication business located at, at the three hangars. On the south end of the three hangars were six metal buildings. They called them butler buildings because that was the manufacturer. And they were 80 by 120 foot buildings. We had a roll up, big roll up door on north and south end. And hangar, or building 13 was my father's building. And it was just off of the southwest corner of hangar number three. And we had a little 18 foot travel trailer that I lived in a lot of those, those years. I was kind of the, the watchdog as well as the labor. <laughs> <laughs> We did a lot of work for the mines, fabricating a lot of uh, pipe fitting and a lot of uh, stuff that had to be relined, uh, rubber lined for the mines. We did a lot of work for the mines. We did a bit of work for Hughes, building missile handling carts and repairing plating uh, anodes and um, fabricating target collimators and stuff for, for, for the missiles and stuff at, at, at Hughes. And, a lot of the engineers and the people that worked there were old friends of my dad's and they were always stopping by <laughs> take a boots and you know just talk talk shop so i'd like to say again i don't know how my dad ever got any work done because somebody was always stopping by to talk to him or, or pick his brains because he was kind of a a master of everything he was electronics and uh, ham radio and he when he was a teenager he built TVs and radios and, you know, um, welding. He taught welding at uh, ABC, Tra ABC Trade School in, uh, it was located on 29th Street, Silver Lake. He went to school. He, we almost always had in the garage carport in, um, when we lived on Milton Street in Mission Manor, my dad was always rebuilding somebody's smashed up airplane, fuselage. So I learned a lot about uh, aircraft sheet metal work. And we always had something, uh, instead of a car in the garage or the carport, we always had an airplane. So from the time I was a toddler, I was bucking rivets and, you know, just working on airplanes. And then when, we, when my dad opened the shop at the airport, we did some aircraft work. Uh, one of our projects, we, we designed and built the a fire bomber, the Bore 8 bomber um, fire dispersion, that red clay water to, for putting out fire, mm -hmm. forest fires. We built uh, several of those in the DC-6s and DC-7s and uh, P2Vs. Uh, so yeah, my dad was kind of a jack of all trades. And in hangar number three, right off the corner of our building, you asked for a story. Um, was Saul Pess. He was a, a Turk, originally from Turkey, came to this country when he was a teenager, and uh, he was one hell of a nice guy. He was one of my favorite people in the world. And he was probably, it, when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, he was in his late 70s. And one of the things about him was he was, he was uh, the mechanic for the, the gal that, Amelia Earhart. He was Amelia Earhart's mechanic. And he was the last person to touch her airplane when, it, when she left, departed on that big voyage. And Saul, one of his major projects was he would go over to the scrapyards by, by DM and he would buy the old J-33 engines, jet engines. They were a big pile of them. I mean, just maybe two or three hundred inches in a big pile. And they would he'd buy two or three of them, bring them back to the airport there in hangar number three, and he'd rebuild them and make them work. Because at that time, the FAA started a new regulation where they required all certified FAA schools, aircraft schools, if to be certified for jet engines, you had to have a running jet engine on the premises. So there was a big demand for the jet engines. So Saul took advantage of that and he built it, rebuilt the jet engines. And my part of it was I built the engine stands. 
that was my little project was building, designing and building engine stands. And the fun part of the story was he had an old 51 flatbed Chevy truck. And we would load, the, I would take the forklift and load the engine stand in the Jane engine on the back of the, his flatbed truck. And it would hitch up my dad's portable welder as a, a power source to start the engine. And then we would drive the truck on that apron on the south, south end of the hangers there on the, on the end of the runway, the short runway. And over there we would uh, fire up the jet engine and Saul would say, Jim, you want to drive, drive a truck powered by a jet engine? He's not too many people have driven jet engine 51 Chevy trucks. So then I, I just put it neutral and we'd kind of go in big circles around there on the ramp. So that's one of my claim to fame is I, one of the few people that have ever driven a jet powered 51 Chevy pickup truck or flatbed truck. 